Hey. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Is it, Did we get it? Are we here? It's working. Yeah, I am my own tech guy. Hey, guys, what's up? Give me a thumbs up if you can see me and hear me right now. The chat is not showing up on my desktop, but it should be. But it's on my monitor over there. Can you guys hear me or what, RC Madness? Here, you're up. Kevin, what's going on? Timothy? No, it's not an F-18. Brian Mav Pro, Boozer, John Rogers, Jeff, Paul, Michael, Dave, Bob DeGood, Eric Quinn, Steve Coggins, Barry Gruder, Dave Marshall, Mike Kennedy, Kevin, Randy Milton, RC Madness on approach. Uh, well, I should be able to see the chat right here, but I can't. It's way over here. All right, that's all right. Pilots, and there's a bit of a lag too, so I think I'm seeing what you're seeing, which is kind of crazy. Sounds good, looks good. I've got some, really, I spent all day long getting this dialed in so I could do a few little extras for you all. <laughs> and um, I'm going to drop one on you right now. Are you ready? Boom. Let's see. Let's see how this works. <laughs> The lag time's killing me. Wow, there's quite a lag. You guys seeing it yet? People in other link. I'm trying to understand what's going on. Okay, there you go. You're seeing the Mustang. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't had a chance to fly it yet, but I filmed the build this week, and it goes together very nicely. You guys who have 2200s and uh, 2600s are going to really like it, actually. Um, because you don't have to... Uh, you, you have to carve it up if you put anything bigger in there. You guys have to bear with me a minute while I get myself together. Th this has been a, a heck of a day, to be honest with you. Um, and I really would like to be able to see. There we go. There we go. Into the Universe RC. This is your first time watching. Welcome to the train wreck. That is me trying to... Uh, do some more software. Let me get this pick off of here for a minute. So check out HobbyZone.com for the Mustang and the new one. Some of you already know what it is. Um, three or four sell, Kevin. That's a great question. Um, the prices are already really good and there is another promotion. So you can actually save a little bit more now than, um, than before, which is really cool. So uh, Dave Kowiski, Barry Gruder, Jeff in Lower Alabama. Everybody says welcome to the newcomers. RC Madness, Hangar 51, Stuart Perks, Penrith Electric Model Aero Club. Um, I don't know, actually, on that one. Uh, you guys will have to check out the build this week when I finally get it edited up. And you can see for yourself uh, how truly... Uh, well appointed this Mustang kit is 60 hanger routes in here I don't yeah I'm not really seeing it um, so yeah there you go already thumbs down that's awesome thank you so much you got nothing better to do go beat feed or something um, <laughs> Randy what's going on Ricky the Photon Dave Kowiski Raymond Molina Papa Boozer Lee Davidson, Dave Kowish, yeah, 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 Hippie 64, awesome, awesome. Guys, this is one of those things that I've tried to do numerous times, and I really, <laughs> I wish you knew uh, how hard it is sometimes to get things done 
but I've tried this before with dragging in other sources and all that kind of stuff, and it's it's tough. And you know how I eventually um, figured out is I watch YouTube videos on how to do it, and I found a couple good good channels that had some really pretty clear tutorials. I mean, guys, I probably tried this eight times today, and then other times I've tried it more, and then again. Um, I had it all set. I had it working, but something must have timed out. So it worked out pretty good. Hey, Steven. Cool, man. Good to see you here. Hey, your F-18 is fantastic. I love the weathering on it. I've got the FMS F-18 sitting back here, and um, that build's coming out too soon. And then we've had really just junk weather the last two weekends for getting out and flying. So, it is what it is. But I've got so much stuff um, in the queue, I'll, I'll be okay. Guys, I'm super excited to go to Minnesota next week where we're going to announce the giveaway. So, the show really tonight is all about the stuff going on at HobbyZone.com, which is where you can find these Eros RC models. And um, do we know what the new plane is yet, you guys? Tell me if you think you know in the comments because uh, I could drop a picture in here right now or I can unbox the thing. Olson Aviation got a lot of work done on his planes today. Painted the timber. Papa Boozer. Let's. Okay, that's cool, man. Lee Davidson. FMS F15. Loves it. High Jinx. Jeff and Lower. Yeah, it was windy today. Dave Kowiski, did you get your maidens off okay? You did the Razorback and the uh, the big Corsair, right? Unbox it. Oh, those are answers. It's eleven hundred millimeter, guys. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. Yeah, Dave, it is on the website. You guys can drop that in here, too, if you want. But this is what the website looks like. And here's a nice shot of the plane. And here's me and Mike. <laughs> but there's the plane. And it's available for pre-order right now at the site. So is the um, Mustang and everything else uh, that's not yet arrived is available for pre-order, I believe, and take special care to look around the website really well because um, there's also a coupon code. You can save even more off of this thing. So I think, <laughs> guys, I hope you like me being able to drop in those images and stuff, and I'm really just scratching the surface on this, but I think... It's going to really help me um, up, the, up the ante on this. I love it. I, I hope you guys like it because I spent five hours on it today and another couple last night figuring it out. <laughs> All right. No, Steve, these are available at HobbyZone.com and AerosRC.com. These particular airplanes are not available on the Amazon store. Got the Flightline F4U Corsair for my birthday, says Olson. Nice. It's a great plane. Um, Randy got us, you guys that that are repping and, and hitting the Amazon store, I really appreciate that. Randy got a Wildcat. Um, Kowiski got the, uh, the big jug. When will the slightly upgraded FMS Futura 80 millimeter be in the stores? I'm hoping pretty soon. I think we're getting a sample relatively quickly at this point. All right, guys, check it out. I got my, I got the Corsair here. Nice, huh? That's cool. 
Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. This is going to be super easy to put together. Um, you guys, if you've seen any of the other builds on these planes, you'll know there's really nothing to them. Um, extremely low parts count, which makes uh, assembly a really a real breeze. So we're going to lay out some of this stuff, and then we'll show it to you closer in a minute. Got our tanks. Manuel. Four bladed, one piece propeller. And elevator. Last but not least, the fuselage. Look at this, baby. Looks really nice. I got a little bit of this here to get off. Guys, this is really nice. I'm going to let this mellow here for a minute, and then we'll get into it a little closer. Look at that paint job. I like it. Another 3S Killer Diller 1100 millimeter um, Warbird. This is great. You know what else is nice? The battery tray. And you guys want a really close look at this thing, you'll have to wait for the, uh, the build video. These things fly really nice. I want to see your comments. Wow. Let's mock it up a little bit. That's what you want to see, isn't it? See if we can't mock it up just a little bit. It looks like the horizontal gets glued in. Which is no problem on a bird this size. that looks awesome so check out the website if you want to see more pics too because uh, check this out right there look at that gallery of photos there's a ton of photos there that if you guys want to see um, you really can go to hobbyzone.com or arrowsrc.com and you can get a even closer look at this wonderful plane and the other ones which will all be back in stock really soon yeah on the future I think what they've done is what they do upgrade the ESC and the paint scheme and some of those kinds of things anything else so this is like all the others have been lately um, it takes the two millimeter screws, guys. There you go, hobbyzone.com. You can check that out. Um, also, go to the Teespring store if you like Corsairs, and bam, get you one of those. 
<laughs> Get you one of those. Thanks, uh, Farley boys, for helping me out on that one. I'll get with you later on your payment. I've, I've, I'm about broke even, so I can pay you now. Um, yes, the mains rotate, Kevin. And I will mock it up the best I can here in a second, guys. Yeah, the details are sweet. Wait, I'm, I'm telling you, the Mustang and, um, you know, the Corsair look really good. When you, you go look at the website for the um, Mustang, and they got a, a gallery full of photos as well. And you, you just be really surprised about how nice it looks with the fidelity of the panel lines and the rivet detail and everything like that. Dave Marshall, they didn't do true three panel flaps on this one. Uh, although you definitely could work it out if you wanted to model it up a little bit. There's like one panel outboard. The two tricky ones inboard aren't done. But that also helps keep it light. Uh, Twin Cities. Where's Twin Cities, Grossman? Minnesota? You talking about Minneapolis? Plastic or metal mains? They're metal, clad in plastic. Um, metal trunnion retracts. Metal Trunnion Retracks. Guys, I'm so pumped. I'm going to be in Minnesota next week. We're going to give away the Corsair and the Mustang and probably some other things. These guys are really awesome. Um, they see the value in you all, the community who, who buys this stuff, just as nuts about it as... I am <laughs> as we are as we are all together so yeah yeah check out this wing this is an early sample there's more on the water it's going to be all taped up a little bit better for you this one's actually been mocked up for pictures and put together one other time but it looks really good the angle's right. It's got landing lights, um, nav lights, and there's where your tanks slide in. And you got the metal trunnion retracts, twist and turn retracts, nice tires that aren't going to be too loud. Servos, linkages, all that stuff is done for you already out of the box. I like putting a little tiny bit of glue on these little tiny black screws just to help keep the unit as one nice solid piece plastic hard points here for the you know to screw it to the wing saddle it's nice Let's see what I can do to mock it up on my cruise in stand up in here you guys talk amongst yourselves while I do a quick mock up here This one's really easy to get all the wires through. That's nice. The Mustang's a little trickier, but super sweet. And a couple of you buddies of mine, here's the antennas um, that really help make it dress up. It's nice. And here are the wing screws. Looks like they send you an extra one. They're all the same size, which is nice. And it's, as it's standard lately, these two millimeter uh, headed metric screws. You know what, Paul Hatcher? Corsairs do pretty good on grass. Um, the one thing that's nice about this one, I'll show you the underneath of the wing again here in a second. Um, but one thing nice about this one is there aren't gear doors. You don't have to worry about uh, if you do mess with the angle of the retracts to give yourself a little bit more forward rake or anything, you're not gonna have to worry about uh, gear doors either. You could shim the back of the retracts if you want, but what's neat about a Corsair is if you think about it, the gear are way up there on the leading edge, which already gives it a tremendous amount of advantage in that regard. 
let's get rid of these tanks here for a minute. They do look cool. You guys doing all right? I want you to kind of see what's happening. There you go. I can't see anything, but now you can. <laughs> Good enough. You guys hanging in there? Dave says his my pre-order for the Corsair is in. Now he has eight of them. You already ordered this thing, Dave? Thanks, guys. What's up, Jeffs? Custom RC, Rick and Roy's. My wife, somebody's wife loves somebody's paycheck. My wife loves my paycheck, Rick and Roy says. <laughs> So here we are mocking it up. I mean, I'm screwing it in, for goodness sakes. I'm not going to drop the gear, though, tonight. All that. Yeah, this thing looks great. I can't wait to get this one out. I, I, I was really planning on uh, working the Mustang today, but it was just so windy. Um, I decided to stay in the studio down here and um, work on this live stream game a little bit. Whoa, this looks sweet. Look at that. Let's put the prop on there, wanna? Here's the bits for the prop. You're gonna have a hex base as is customary on these bolt-on shafts with the hex base. And then brass threaded insert in the spinner. Ha ha ha. Yes. Look at that, baby. Look at that. What a good time to be in the hobby, gentlemen. Um, it's, it's really, I'm really tickled that there's so many um, offerings hitting right now that looks nice yeah grossman uh ricky loves his a1 scott r loves his cruising stands for cg and things like that yep 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 just like last week just unboxing <laughs> sound seems to come and go yeah if i'm messing with the microphone i'm liable to be screwing that up Yeah, Deuce is wild. I think those props are relatively interchangeable. If they're not, they're super close, um, as in could be. I actually broke a propeller on my Bearcat, and Dave, it's not... Man, nothing's plugged in, Dave. Hi, Jinx RC. You can go to HobbyZone.com for the Cruise In stand or CruiseIn.com. Do it now, says Dave. I can't, bro. It's... I, I'm not messing with the receiver and batteries and all that right now. Um, I have some more batteries coming from RC Jetworks, actually. As a matter of fact, that I was going to have expressed here, but it was like $40 for like three 2200s to express them. I was like, um, nope, <laughs> not happening. Skip Bill RC just got back from crashing my timber. Oh, no, doing something stupid. Is there room for a 4S? Uh, I would say yes. Especially if you are in the 2200, the brick style rather than the flat style. Um, Dave. <laughs> um, we'll see, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. That's, that's too hard. Um, what are we talking about, Papa Boozer? 
it's just better to wait and see the build, guys, for, for gear drop. And I've worked hard on those builds. I mean, they're like less than 10 minutes, but I put a lot of time in them. So wa watch those for me. Um, see the nose art better. You want to see the nose art better? Is that what you're telling me? You just ordered seven batteries from you guys. Then I ordered the Flightline Corsair. Are you talking about motion? CTC Flying 2011. Yeah, you, my my videos still are over there. Skill. Let's see. Tell them Dave inverted flat spins on a timber. Papa and Hippie, you're talking about something. Skip can fix it. Papa Boozer. Oh, where to get the monkey pants shirt. Yeah, check it out. Um, somebody might drop a link for me to the Teespring store. Eventually, uh, Otherwise, it'll be in the description as soon as um, I can mess with this video afterwards. The Corsair Rebuild Vita is going okay. There, there's so much in my queue right now, it's not even uh, funny. Sean, Ryan, make sure you pre-flight this one. You know what? Actually, I have a layover. We're going to Minnesota with this show to do the giveaway, you guys. You have to be subscribed here, and you, I want you to go to the HobbyZone.com website and sign up for their emailer as well. Criteria is... Mm, probably just going to be you have to be in it to win it in the chat next week you have to be there and you have to be subscribed and you have to have a youtube account to be able to comment in the chat in the first place so if you have an account and you're coming over um subscribe yeah make sure i pre-flight this one yep yep hashtag skip can fix it says uh weaver <laughs> Um, Reckham Roy's wants to know, anyone know how to straighten that type of prop shaft? I do. Get another one. Just too, too, too much. Been going back and watching your flight demos and enjoying them. Kevin, are you talking to me or someone else? Uh, the price is super low. Let's go to the website, shall we? Bam! Here we are on the website. Of course, it's very small for me. I'm not able to see what that says. Um... It's probably 189 and then um, if you do the coupon code, you can save another $20 or something. I mean, it's out of this world, and that's for a limited time, obviously. Um, what shaft are you trying to locate, Roy? There we go. Yeah, 189 and it looks like you can do a $20 uh, special offer coupon code as well. Um, Pre-order is probably the way to go because just like the Bearcat and the Trojan, they went very quickly. Um, you guys have all responded really well to these 3S offerings. Yeah, Dave Kowiski, I mean, goodness sakes, what a good price. Yeah, CZ Flyer, you're funny. Um, oh, yeah, Hippie64. It's the new one. Check it out on the store, bro. The coffee, I got it, Michael. It's right here. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with it. That's the thing about adding more things to the show. I've got more to do. It, I mean, it's just something else. But here's another, bam, nice shot of this baby. And, and look at all those pictures underneath that image. You can see those on the website when you look at the gallery and open that up. The hex drive bolt on prop shaft. Yeah, those are should be a dime a dozen. Um, they're going to be back in stock pretty soon if they're not um, already over here at HobbyZone.com. And I believe it's an 850 kV brushless outrunner. So you might look at some of the Rock Hobby stuff and look at the bolt pattern. Um, it might be right on. Looks good, right? So 
Yep, there's the new shirt. Thank you, Farley boys, for that one. Um, get Mike involved. I talked to him today. He's invited. He's always invited. Um, I would love to get Mike involved. There's a reason I, I hire outside designers to help me do stuff. Um, yeah, Michael, hey, this is the first time. I mean, I've tried this before, but it's the first time I really was able to work it out with um, the software to uh, bring you guys more images. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I, I can really build this show out a little bit more. A little bit better. Oh, yeah, Ricky, I'm going to be in Chicago next weekend. Uh, the layover is like two and a half hours or something, which um, when we are booking the flights, we were talking about it like that was a problem. I'm like, no, I will totally sit and edit because I have so much to get done. I'm working on the Fox 3000 millimeter glider from FMS. Um, I have a FMS F-18 build video. I have the, the Aeros RC super dope little Mustang uh, build video. And, of course, i got to fly it as soon as I get a chance. Uh, the T-45 stuff i got to finish off and get the uh, servo working to drop the tail hook. And I'm sure there's something else. The big Corsair video, uh, the repair, and whatever else. There's a lot going on. But it's, it's a lovely place to live. Um, Easter tomorrow, I'll be lucky if I get to fly. You know what? Tomorrow will be the best day. It definitely will be. Today was super, super windy. Dennis Farley tells Dave he needs one of each color to go with each plane. What are you talking about? Easter bunny. Thanks, Michael. That's really nice. Hey, boozers, what are you guys doing next week or tomorrow? Just finishing up an Aranka Chant project to make room on the bench for my Flightline Corsair, which will be here from you. It's not me, guys. It's not you guys. I'm not there anymore. But it's a great plane. Um, Monday. Oh, yeah. Cool, man. Check out the RC Pilots Lounge Facebook group if you want to drop pictures of your progress and uh, anything else you guys are working on. It's starting to get nice again, so you guys should be... Um, flying. Dennis Farley, eight Corsairs, eight shirts. Oh. <laughs> Paul wishes the bunny would bring a plane. The bunny will bring you a plane if you bring the bunny some cabbage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeff's Custom RC just mailed out one. I don't see it for me. What an airplane, man, from the Easter Bunny. Papa Boozer have an Easter lobster. Uh, Olsen Aviation got two hours of flying in today. You guys, Olsen, uh, you the one that w we were talking about the T6 and stuff, and I talked you into starting a YouTube channel because you were wanting to show me your videos. Is that right? You ought to drop a link to your channel. Get, let guys check you out later. Uh, him and his dad go out and fly in this little parking lot a lot of times. And the kids really nail in the landings. Actually, it's a good time. The whole country is windy. Yep. Boozers. Yeah, what is going on at the Boozers? I asked them, what's going on with the Boozers tomorrow? Talk to me. Eric Quinn still wants a, a Tony 1100 millimeter. Yes. Yeah, cool. Nice. So what else happened this week? It's been crazy. We had a guy out, and um, a lot of times I wear a lot of hats at my job, but this week I was really out on the truck like every day. And um, that keeps me from having a little bit of you know downtime in between bookings. I'm able to uh, handle social a little better and things like that. Mary Boozer doesn't know yet. We're living. Uh, you're so. So what you're trying to say is you're flying by the seat of your pants. Is that right? I want you guys to really show up in full, full ninety-two up in here. 
I want you guys to show up in full force for the show next week. Hobby Zone has been extremely gracious. Um, they love you guys. They like what we're doing here. And uh, I'm just over the moon to be going there with this show, with you guys, to Minneapolis, to the Hobby Zone warehouses and offices to do this giveaway. They've got, I, I want to ask him. Basically, we're going to be spinning a wheel, it sounds like. So w there's some things to work out, but it's going to be so fun. And again, we're giving away two planes and some other things as well. So I'm really, really pumped. I'm proud um, of you guys and the show and my persistence at going nine plus months consecutively uh, weekly shows. You guys, I wouldn't do it without you. Um, so fun. Yeah. Hey, Paul Hatcher, you got to be there to win it. You got to be in it to win it. Um, Dave Kowiski just subscribed to Olson Aviation's channel. Um, Hobby Zone just sent out coupons um, on the emailer, Jeff. Yeah, you guys get in on that emailer. These guys are, they, they're, they are in it to win it. They've been doing this 25 years and they're, I, I just know they're super pumped to be having their own line of planes to be, uh, to, you know, bring into market. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, RC Flyboy made my F4 Phantom on Wednesday. Thanks for your help with that, Pilot Ryan. Did did we uh, did I get did I help you through video or comment sections or messenger or just tell me tell me how if you don't mind, RC Flyboy. I really appreciate knowing how people are getting value over here. Uh, CTC. I am so sorry to hear that. Um, bless, bless you. Um, may you see many blessings in the future. And I'm just, I'm so very sorry to uh, hear that. But you could not come to a better place to hang out with uh, lovely people like this. Oh man, the comments went too fast. Uh, <laughs> Dave Marshall says, "Don't listen to me." Don't anybody show up next week because he wants to win the stuff himself. Um, would would the RC okay love RC? Would the RC Jetworks thirty three hundred Roaring Top batteries work on this bird as well, Pilot Ryan? Let's find out right now. I do know for a fact with that you would have to carve the Mustang up if you wanted to fit larger than twenty two hundred twenty six hundreds. There is a 2700 roaring top that's like a brick shape that I want to I want to try out when I get a chance, um, but I don't know yet. Now on the Corsair, let's find out right this minute. If somebody has a link to the emailer, if it works like that, you could drop it in the chat here. Um, for those of you who have missed the um, emailer. It, yeah, I hear you. It's going to be a random. Yeah, Olsen Aviation getting the subs. I hope I'm getting some. <laughs> Let's see. Grab my batteries now. So I got a Roaring Top 3300 and um, the RC Jetworks. 3300 dimensionally dimensionally they're they're identical except the uh the roaring top pack is just a little tiny bit thinner oh it's gonna be snug but it's actually working out Let's let's pull out the battery tray and find out for real. So I'm gonna strap the I'm gonna strap the RC Jetworks pack to the battery tray and we'll see what what happens here. You know you you I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit. 
you could always go without the um, the tray if you had to. Grossman says, don't draw till I get here. It's going to be next week, guys. Shelby Sealback is a popular cat with a lot going on. Says, Saturdays are hard for him. Catch it on the replay, my man. Yeah, FAA registration is pretty, pretty easy. I got caught up on all that stuff like last week. Um, I still need to put my numbers on my planes. Yeah, right. Um, but I need to. I need to. Let's be responsible. You know what is funny? I feel like uh, the the AMA just finally joined uh, <laughs> our Facebook group, the RC Pilots Lounge Facebook group. I'm like, guys, why'd you wait so long? 93 in here. This is good. Deuces wild. He's got a battery just one step away from gear down and running it up. God, I got people asleep up there. Yeah, Scott R. Cali Graphics will make a page of stickers with your FAA numbers. I think Jeff Marshall also does a stencil thing. I actually am going to reach out to Cali. I want to do a video for Cali. I have so many custom planes around. It was all her from even before um, the motion days. When I was doing magazine stuff and the planes came just white and I would have to pick a scheme and all that kind of stuff. Um, I want to do a video for her uh, and show all those planes and have her hook me up with, uh, I'm telling you guys my plans, I want to do a giveaway. I want to do a Cali Graphics package giveaway if she'll let me and uh, me get a set as well. Stencils are reusable. That's right. All right, here we go. We're strapped in like Errol Flynn. You ready? Being a Corsair, it can use nose weight most likely for real. But I, I've flown Corsairs to this similar size. Um, actually, on the Throwback Thursday, I put up an 1100 millimeter uh, Corsair, Durfly Corsair from years ago on the um, Facebook page group. All right. Yeah, it's, it's bigger than the Mustang is. It's just hard to see what's going on. I tell you what, get the, what gets in the way is the strap. If you shorten the strap a little bit, I think it it go. Yeah, it's, it's just, if you didn't use the, uh, I tell you what, if you stand it up and you don't use the battery tray, it's perfect. <laughs> you guys will have to look at the build to see this better. But, um, yeah, the 3300... It, it, it fits if you don't use the board, right? Um, and if you stood it up on the board, it's not going to work either. So the board has to be gone to fit the 3300. But 2200, 2600, 2700s are going to be no problem at all. That feels really good with the 3300 in it, by the way. Really nice. The CG and it felt like just rough right here on the fly, but I felt like I was on those double lines with my fingers. And yeah, I know that the stand will do it, but I'm not going to set that up and do that right here. I got so much stuff hanging here. Yeah, so my fingers with the 3300, with my 3300 all the way in the front, my fingers are just in front of these double lines a little bit, which is 
great. It's a solid looking bird, guys. Look at that. Look at that. I don't have a servo tester, man. I'm, I'm saving up to get one. Hey, Ryan, you still loving the E-Flight F4? Super Viper is still out of stock. Um, Super Viper at RC Jetworks. They'll be here soon. Um, check, check with them. At, uh, what is it? Info at rcjetworks.com because I am pretty sure that uh, they're only out of stock because they're still on the way. I could be wrong. They could have sold out, which I wouldn't surprise me at all. Maria in the house, what is going on? Your man just asked for a shout out. Uh, she, he says, you think he's crazy. You're probably right. Um, I think everybody thinks I'm crazy and that's okay. I talk to people all the time and I tell them uh, what I do, right? This. And it's like uh, the biggest little business, what is it? The biggest little business you never heard of. Pilot Ryan put a label maker in your store. That's not a bad idea. Grossman says, um, don't mess with Ryan's Starbucks because I'll bite. Yeah, right? Um, guys, it's getting nice. Um, are you going to Jet Jam, ladies and gentlemen? If you're a jet guy, I expect you might if you're close. Um, if you're not a jet guy, then we'll see you at Nephi, hopefully. So the middle two weekends of June is when that is going down. Yeah, hit the like button, dudes, um, if you don't mind. Hippie64 says he's whacked out. Um, if you have Facebook, you can email from there, Mrs. Boozer. What are we talking about? Rob Trucking Bear says his friend purchased 10 acres in Missouri after his house is built. He's making us a runway for our RC planes. That dude needs to get his priorities straight. Runway first, right? And he said at his field, the FAA can um, is welcome. <laughs> That's not what he said. <laughs> Uh, Dennis Farley says, no, we know, we know, just like me, hippie, Jet Jam, yay, Dave Kowishke, um, Jeff's Custom RC, thumbs up, Craft King, Mama Boozer, my wife's got Facebook, thanks, I'll message you from there, oh crap, wait a minute, I'll figure it out, Lee Davidson says, nothing is ever close to me, which is why we're hanging out online up in here, 91 in the house, Paul Hatcher, Mrs. Boozer, RC, Boozer Girls, Ryan, I got you. Neffy, here we come. Dennis Farley's family's driving a thousand miles or something, right? Is that what it is? Um, to come hang out and fly at Muncie. Grossman, are you going this year? I forget. I forget. Are you going? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Can't go to Texas, says Eric Quinn. About 20 minutes for Triple Tree in Spartanburg. Huju says, Hobby Lobby sells sheets of alphanumeric labels as small as a quarter inch in both black and white. There are over 1,000 characters per sheet. It's called ABC123, uh, otherwise known as the Jackson 5 stuff. I cover them with clear packing tape. Sounds like a lot of work to me, honestly. Um, <laughs> worked for the FAA for 30 years. They don't have enough guys to regulate the real planes, much less the RC toy, says Ron Upton. That's kind of what I thought. Um, you know, I joked with somebody today. I was like, as soon as the mailbox police are done patrolling, making sure no one's committing federal crimes by messing with the mailbox, maybe they'll come check us out too. No EDF yet, says Dave Marshall. Seriously, Ryan, what's a good first EDF for an intermediate experienced prop pilot? Something like the E-Flight Viper. That's a great one, 
my question for an intermediate guy like you is also where do you see yourself in the future like what jets do you, would you like to be flying if if you didn't have a learning curve to get over what would you be seeing yourself purchasing right now out of the stuff that's out there like if you didn't have to deal with the learning part what would you want to be flying because for me i feel like there's different roads i could take somebody down with advice depending on where they see themselves ending up right so if somebody already knows they like 90 millimeter jets and bigger you know then there's a different trajectory if you'd like the 70 millimeter space because you're, you're just not going to spend five bills on a jet, then, you know, there's a different answer. So so if you like the 70, 80 millimeter space, Viper, for sure, you're an intermediate guy who's got some skill. You could jump in really wherever you want, depending on what size class you want to begin in will determine the answer I would like to give. Dave Marshall wants to get the new F-18C, the motion, the big free wing bird. Um, that'll be sweet. Bigger does fly better. I would get some stick time on a jet. Uh, the Viper's never going to be a bad choice. But if you know you want to fly 90 millimeter stuff, I think maybe a guy like you w- would do good with something like an L-39, right? It's an 80 millimeter jet that's going to take the same kind of batteries the 90 millimeter stuff takes. And it also will take smaller kind of batteries as well, like the 70s. So it's a good, and also it's, it flies like a sport jet. So, you know, the L-39 is not a bad one. The F-18, the thing about those shapes, um, if you haven't flown jets, they'll catch you off guard. But that's to be said no matter where you're coming from, right? So the flight uh, Viper is going to fly like a, I mean, it's a sport jet, right? It's kind of got a straight wing like the Avanti, like a Bayhawk does. So I think Bayhawk, L-39, the F-22 is a doll. I mean, it's really big and light, and it's definitely got that big kind of delta uh, wing root glove kind of shape. So it's it, it can scrub off speed really fast, but if you fly the snot out of it, I mean, you'll be good. I think you'll be all right. And, and again, uh, if you want to go further with me on this conversation, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, hit me up on Messenger or something. Kevin, have I flown the FMS F-18, Ryan? Yes, I have. I flew one in Texas for Dave Hawker. That video is on this channel. And me and Mike flew one the other day. And I browned out. It was my fault. Uh, I did a tweak to the landing gear, but I didn't cut my shim out of the way and and caught up on the tiller. And it, I, I browned it out. It's my fault. But I got a new one sitting back here ready to go. So, uh, yeah, it's nice. I mean, somebody who's not... So if you want to warm up and kind of see what's up with the character on the big one, the little one's probably not a bad idea. I have the RC Jetworks 4000 6S packs specifically for that bird, actually. Um, Dave's RC, what's going on? F-22 is quick, says Grossman. One of the guys at our club has one. It is quick, but you know what I think is one of the neatest thing about jets? When you can go, like, slow with them. I love that. I, I, I love a jet that can has that wide envelope and can slow down. Um, somebody's birthday. <laughs> Papa Boo, sir. I'm just going to call you Papa Boober. I mean, goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, Dave Marshall. We might have already spoke on Facebook Messenger. I'm not sure. I'm Ryan Ramsey there because you can't uh, really have... I have a page I've had for years, uh, Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike RC uh, page on Facebook. Pre, we, We've had our social since 2012, but we took a break. Lee Davidson, what's the biggest P-51 
of S plane you've flown. I know what you mean exactly. How oh, man, I'm sorry, but man, the first thing I think of is Dynam stuff. I mean, a lot of times we brought those planes out numerous times because they would have a problem, something electronically, um, and you, you couldn't get the work done. So, I mean, we had the 262 forever before we finally were able to get it to work. Um, everything work all at once so we could do our, our video work on it. Uh, the new Futura does look super cool to me, and I can't wait to see how it flies, to be honest with you guys. Paul Hatcher, Avanti or L39? Do you fly off grass, Paul? I can't remember. Both of those are great for grass or um, hard surface, actually. If you like the military feel, the L39 is going to take it. But I feel like everybody should fly an Avanti at least once. Because <laughs> I say it a lot. That thing's special. Um, and, and I'll tell you one one of the big th character traits about the Avanti that I consider special and noticed right away. After flying the Stinger 90, and anybody who's had one of those, it's a great little, it's a great jet. But it's got a big monster rudder. And I felt like that thing would wobble around in the yaw like a Corsair can sometimes. Even though it had that big vertical. Well, the Avanti, you look at it and you're like, man, that tail is not very big. You almost don't think it's enough. But then you look at those, that, that I call it the keel, that ventral, that, that vertical surface underneath the airplane... And it helps keep it grooving, just locked in. That's what I attribute it to, and also the wing shape and all that kind of stuff. But um, that's one of the things that makes that shape, which is exactly like the the Super Viper at HSD. Um, I mean, look at it. It's an Avanti. It's got the keel underneath and everything. Uh, just The only thing different, really, is the paint scheme and the uh, tips don't turn up. Yeah, the Avanti is fast. It's awesome. And it's big. It's like for a jet, I think it's nearly 48-inch wingspan or something like that. Uh, I really kind of want another one. <laughs> it's the only off-road plane that Grossman owns, the uh, Avanti. It looks like they put a new... Um, runway down at triple tree didn't they you know what the best dynam planes i think are the ones that have fixed gear you don't have to worry about uh you know retracks i miss my avanti so bad but the fms 70 millimeter is pretty sweet says tom you say it's twitchy is it twitchy in the pitch or just all around Aventador got his Arctic Camo F-16 70mm ready today. That's what she said, says Mrs. Boozer. <laughs> I still want to try one of those E-Flight F-16s. Super bad. Dave Marshall says the Avante is super fast. I'd be a little hesitant to start with that as my first EDF. I want something that can slow down and run stable I, that Avanti will slow down. It's got a great... Watch videos on the Avanti and watch guys have trouble landing it only because the thing never wants to come down. It's got a lot of wing area. There's nothing extra on it. So it's nice and light on the wing loading and it's, you know, good size. And you're able to fly, you know, 4,000s to 6,000s in it. What a lovely range. And the lights on it are fantastic. There's no doubt about it. Um, and the landing gear are going to be up to the task of less than perfect. It's one of those birds that you just got to bleed it off. You got to bleed it all off. Um, yeah, man. 
Papa has the A10 at his house filming a repaint. We will see how good he is with the camera soon. Brooke and Born, uh, do you need to mix elevator with flap? On what aircraft, my friend? Hey, 101, cool. Nine more and we uh, tie the record. That's awesome. It, we're an hour in, too, and I don't feel like I've really made any prolific statements other than to announce the fantastic little Corsair here. Grossman, love you, man. Best advice Ryan gave me, commit to the back pitch. That goes for a lot of planes. It's a good way to bleed the speed off. Gage Peterson, have you seen the Horizon Hobby video on the E-Flight F-16? Uh, Allie put it on 8S. That's the one where he flies through the shelter? I have, if that's the one. Yep, granite with the um, that geotex, probably, right, Steve? Yeah, man, a, a lot of planes will become a bucking bronco if you don't commit to the pitch. You know, you hear Captain Mike say it a lot uh, when he's talking about um, setting your attitude, your angle of attack on your descent, and just holding it there. You're not going to wallow around in the pitch. You need to control that descent. Uh, set your glide the way you want it with your throttle, but really maintain that um, angle of attack. Yeah, guys, I could probably do a better job at tweeting this stuff out. I'm not sure Twitter's really the one. But um, Facebook, um, let folks know we're over here doing this. But it's like, you know what, nine months in a row, I figure you should know by now. <laughs> um, I, you know, what's a, it's really amazing how much I still don't know about this streaming gig on the Avanti I can't remember if that called for a mix on the Avanti I'll tell you whatever the manual says I did it because my job still um, even though I, ju I just work for you guys now by the way <laughs> um, nothing so uh, yeah my job is to be a point of reference. I feel like my... Holy crap, Dave. Thanks, man. Oh, my goodness. My job is to be the segue. I was talking to the Hobby Zone folks t uh, today or maybe the day before, and I was like um, talking about you guys uh, being so pumped. I hope that you guys are pumped for uh, yourselves as well as me because... This group of people that shows up every week to hang out, who's obsessed with these planes like me, um, I feel like an ambassador, right? Like some segue between the industry in a way and you guys. But I'm just like I I'm I am you guys, but like I got my foot in the door somehow, and I just never. The door may sl slam on my foot, but I, I won't move it. So I'll always be an ambassador for you guys. Um, Mary Boozer RC, Ryan, how would you compare this to the E-Flight F4U? I see them being for the same customer. So what's the pros and cons of each and why buy one versus the other? That's like 20 questions in one comment. Um, I want to thank Dave RC though officially again. Like, that's so so nice, and it really helps out tremendously. It's amazing what <laughs> what I put Boozer. You know a little bit. Like, I invest a lot into this whole thing that is this little miniature media production company of Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike. So it all helps tremendously. Check out Dave's RC's YouTube channel. Give him a subscribe, a like. Uh, if you haven't, um, tell him who sent you and, and jump in over there. Hop in the comment section, say hello. Um, he's having fun over there, man. We all have it bad for this hobby, right? Um, I hope you guys are pumped. Um, I'm just over the moon to be going to Minnesota with this show, guys, and, and really excited about I think the the what the future has in store. Um, Boozer. First thing comes to mind to answer your one of many questions. Um, Dave, thanks, man. Um, 
one's a 1200 millimeter aircraft and has the potential to come with an AS3X receiver. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger and it comes with a receiver and um, it's also a great plane. It's going to cost a little bit more. This one's $189 right now with a $20 coupon. So that's hard to beat. And it's coming to you from folks with loads of experience as well. Um, you really just have to... Rick, Let me get. don't let me forget this you right there. You really just have to go with what's right for you on size. Um, and batteries too, right? So a lot of guys that are maybe ready to dabble with 4S or are committed to 4S um, batteries. It's already tried and true that the 1200 millimeter E-Flight stuff is a great um, option for that. A little bit bigger, it's going to be easier to fit those packs. Um, you don't have to bring a shoehorn with you. But I think if you're a three-cell guy and you're cool living in three-cell land, um, 2200, 2600s, um, and, and really, like the Bearcat, you can fit bigger packs in there. But stuff like the Corsair and the Mustang, um, really on the edge. You, you like the 2200s and 26, 2700 batteries, uh, the brick shape more than the flat shape. Unless you don't mind carving up the inside to accommodate larger packs. Again, one of you guys mentioned it earlier that uh, nose weight's always a good thing, really. So... I don't know if I answered your question at all, but the the Trojan also is one of those planes that's got a big enough canopy uh, and battery hatch area that you can get away with a lot of uh, big uh, planes, big batteries. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Hangar 51. It's crazy. Jack Miller, the uh, Futura, is coming to this channel to be. They like us at FMS, so. Uh, seems like the new stuff at FMS is coming this way. Uh, that that new version 2 A10 in Arctic Camo, I believe, is something I'm going to get to try. Which is the only reason I even consider for a minute getting rid of my free wing one. Because it's totally dope as well. Um, but I kind of like the idea maybe I won't have to take the wings off in one battery. Because I'm going to have an F14 pretty soon that's going to take two batteries. So... Um, Brooklyn likes safe mode when he loses orientation, if he loses it. Yeah, it's, that technology is fantastic. There's no doubt about it. You, and you know what? It's all about making, I want to give the best opinion, answer the most questions I can so you guys can make the right decision for yourself. Um, uh, different circumstances, right? Are going to lead to certain things being a better answer e-flight p39 gonna be good question mark i'm into it i want to try it you know i'm just nuts i told my dad years ago years ago before i was doing magazine stuff before i did video anything i said dad i want to fly everything well even if i don't like it like i want to fly everything once you start getting a taste <laughs> for how different shapes behave and things fly differently, um, it's it, again, it's addictive. Like I tell people who are who don't know the hobby at all, right? Like you, if you don't know airplanes, you don't know why somebody would need more than one. What one of the reasons I think is that they all fly their own way. Um, it's it's really neat to see, let's say, a Corsair. I've probably flown a bunch of different ones at this point, different sizes. You know, it's cool to see the character traits of that shape transcend all the different manufacturers, right? Um, sea Furies are that way. Spit, I mean, everything's that way. Spitfire. Every, these shapes have their own character. So even between manufacturers and brands, it's nice to see that kind of those aerodynamic things play out regardless of kind of equipment like on shape alone. So to me it's a 
it's the art of aviation in a way. It, that's why I, I don't get mad, but when somebody assumes a plane takes down mix, let's say on a flap to elevator, it may don't assume don't assume it because one plane, let's say a high wing plane takes down mix with flaps, for example. Not every high wing plane might. Um, same with same with the you know warbirds. Some warbirds want a down mix. Some want an up mix. It just it's whatever the plane that shape needs. And also you get to cater your flying to yourself. If you know how you want to be on approach, if you know what you want it to uh, feel like, then you can tweak that into happening. I feel like my job has always been to show you all what the manufacturer's given you as a point of reference and that's why I really do my best to go by the book because it's obvious to me after all this time that you really do care and listen to what I say about this stuff because um, you know let's face it most of the times you can't see this unless someone has one at the field you, you're you're going on what you see online <clears throat> so if we can be those guys that you trust we, we want to give you the goods and i want to give you a level playing field so you can make an informed decision once again I, me and mary boozer talked about this too because listen me and wesley don't really need um to go with the book because at this point we know by looking if it's too much throw or whatever we have our own preferences and things like that but I think it's a great value to all who pay attention and use these videos to help make their decisions when you level the playing field. So, Because honestly, I don't really feel like I need to do high or low rate. I could just set up one. I could maybe have a high rate you know, tail section. Usually for me, uh, I need high rate just because... Uh, let's say the winds are crossy or for ground handling or something. Brooklyn born is concerned about that long front gear on the P39. You're a wise man. I mean, when you when you put something out at the end of a longer stick, the fulcrum effect, you know what I mean? Leverage is going to be greater. Um, but I do think it looks like they've definitely beefed it up. If you look at the, what was it? Was it a 980 or 1100 millimeter P39, the Rock Hobby one? Um, man, that was pretty skinny. So I'm hoping this 1200 millimeter L39 has. Um, I, it, it looks beefier even on the pictures I've seen, and also because of its size, it ought to fly lighter on the wing. I'm just guessing. But that little 980 or 1100, whatever it was, built to be 4S badass, um, it, it's a 1200 millimeter now. So the wing loading should be a little lighter. So I believe you're going to get a more rugged and durable design nose gear anyway. Plus, you'll benefit a little bit from the uh, decrease in wing loading. Grossman, thank you so much. Hangar 51, it really is too bad they stopped making them. Um, yeah, Dennis. Um, Deuces Wild says, just throw the manual away and wing it. Well, that works. I mean, if I didn't do video for everybody, I would do that. Ryan, dad got the free wing F-22, says Ol Olsen. What's your first name, man? I forget. It's not Nelly, is it? <laughs> Anybody remember that? You older guys will. Little House on the Prairie. Um, we're looking at an hour and 20. It is coming back. It's coming. One of my favorite is the Flex Jet at the moment, says Boozer. My favorite RC plane? My gosh. I don't have any idea right now, honestly. Papa Boozer says he can't buy any more airplanes until you guys buy more t-shirts. Why? I'm retired. Mama said I must make money to support my habit. 
uh, Aventador. Without Ryan and Mike, I would not have found Free Wing. I am glad. Uh, Grossman, remember those days, Brian? All us newbies, let's share a thread. Um, ready for the... Oh, yeah, yeah, the retool on the 1700-millimeter Corsair. I, I, is that really... Is that happening? Benjamin, that's right. Benjamin. Wayne, 630 in the house. Danny Snyder, how are you? Um, Roy says it's sad that he remembers that. Hey, Wayne. You know, we didn't have cable growing up, man, so it was like a lot of rerun, syndicated syndicated shows. My kid right now is loving uh, the old cowboy shows, which I am fine with. It's called ME TV around here. It's just all these old westerns and stuff, and... Um, a lot of Steve McQueen and the, all those guys. It, it's uh, it's cool. Every morning that's what's on before school. Which beats the hell out of My Little Ponies, which is what my daughter likes. So, anyway. Lee Davidson's loving the FMS F-15 right now. Um, somebody asked me about the F-18. It's awesome. I'm sorry, Ron. Um... Mrs. Boozer says, hippie, it's true. Mama said she was cutting his airplane funds off. You know what you got to do is start treating them like baseball cards, you know. Uh, work them up and move them out. That's how you afford the new one sometimes. Wayne says he has 22 grandchildren. Whoa. Sean says that one's going to cost a pretty penny. The 50s cowboy shows that you now have to pay for to watch. I don't have to pay for them. Have you ever been to the Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, R.C.? Dude, you talking about Oshkosh? Yeah, man, I grew up there. That's where this all started for me. Um, Victor Shamulus dropping links. Cash and checks making sound effects. METV is on here too, brother, says Roy. Cool. Who else here has and or has flown the Durfly Extra? Victor has. And I think he really likes it. And he's probably got videos of it on his channel. I talked to the factory guy at FMS and plead for them to build a 1700 millimeter A1 Sky Raider. Any luck, Ricky? Three great granddaughters. Wow. It's going fast in the chat, y'all. Happy Easter just arrived in the house. What's the new plane announcement? It's this one right here in our face 1100 millimeter Corsair available at hobbyzone.com. It's a three cell power plane. It's going to really like 2200, 26, 2700 brick style packs although the 3300 fits if you get rid of the battery tray fits actually really snug in there uh the 3300 3s rc jetworks pack really same dimensions as roaring top and admiral um that's what's up man it's nice and we're going to give these two babies away next week live from minneapolis minnesota at hobby zone warehouses um offices i'm so pumped we're taking the show on the road. Um, Ricky, I will be two and a half hours in the airport. I think O'Hare. Um, yeah, Orchard. Yep, O'Hare. I'll tell you the times when I know them. I, I forget. It's on my itinerary or whatever. Oh, you're talking RC. Yeah, no, I haven't been to that. I wish. Um... What plane did you get for your Dave's RC? Mama Boozer also retires in 45 days. Going to be on vacation and away from RC. Um, it's hard to keep up. Another girl coming in October. Rick and Roy is going to be there. Yeah, you guys got to be in it to win it. You got to be at the show next week. Um, if you want to get in on the giveaway, they're going to give away the Corsair and the Mustang and some other things. Hey, Ryan, I'm new to the hobby. I watch your videos on YouTube. Thanks. I'm learning a lot from you. Kevin, appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of videos on the Motion RC YouTube channel and this channel right here where Mike and I have flown a lot of stuff. Um, keep it on this channel right here. You can check out our flight lessons. Um, all these channels that are here in the chat hanging out like Mary Boozer's, Dave's RC. Um, most everybody who has a wrench has a channel. Um, and they feel free to drop links to their channels. If there's any questions you have, feel free to ask because there's a 
there's like a thousand years of RC experience like hanging out right now in the room. We still got 94 in here at an hour and a half. That's awesome. Um, HSD said they're going to tool up to make it again. I'll believe it when I see it. That would be awesome. Are we talking about the A1 Sky Raider? That would be sweet, Hangar 51. That would be sweet, but I'll believe it when I see it. I love the stuff that they make, and I, I really want to get my hands on some more of that HSD stuff. Um, but they announce stuff too early. As they got to sell the stuff they have. Ryan, is it always fun or does it ever feel like work? I am crazy, Br Brooken. So I, I hustle for fun. I work for fun. Um, OCD is not the word I'm looking for, but obsessive is. I get a hold of something and I run with the ball. Run, run, run. So, I like working. It's okay. <laughs> it, especially this kind of work. I mean, I, I work hard in my, in my, my every day anyway. Um, and I always have, really, no matter what I did. I loved working hard for uh, motion. And we, me and Mike do it um, on top of our regular full-time jobs. And... I think the fact that you all thought we were full time for that whole time really says a lot. You know what I mean? We like working. Aventador, who needs a wrench? Anybody? The Avio C130 looks nice, but it's chronically out of stock. But I still have a C17 EDF in the box, says Fred. Um, work here is fun. Compulsive excessive disorder. CED, is that a thing? I got ORC. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Flying is fun, not work. Yes and no. Um, I'm not sure I really ever answered the question. Um, I mean, look, when you're flying a, pig, a piece of garbage, it, it, it is work, right? But it's still fun. Dave Marshall, have I ever tried a 3D printed plane? No. I would like to, but I would probably be more inclined to go, you know, balsa or composites first. Paul, you want a wrench? Is that what you're talking about? Aventador wants a wrench. Let's give him a wrench. You want a wrench? I'll give you a wrench. It's, uh... I just screwed up my... my screen but <laughs> yeah Grossman well when you like what you're doing it's okay you don't make anything there we go yeah we'll work for RC planes and hangar space for all of them you know it's so funny you know it's it it's turned into also when Mike and I started this, like the video stuff was just, um, oh, collateral damage. Um, it, it was just something you had to, it came with it, but it wasn't like my jam. But after doing like loads, I mean, hundreds of videos at this point, um, hundreds, like four or five hundred, I, 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 you know, I think I kind of like video now, too. So it's a, it says, CZ Flyer, all it means with the blue wrench is that these guys can drop links if they want to. Um, that That's all. I don't want to spend the whole rest of the show giving them out. And I don't care if you have one, but I, 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 uh, I, I don't want to just sit here and click... David Attenberg. Um, did you want to wrench David Attenberg? Where are you at, man? Did I, I thought I gave you one. I gave somebody one just now. Kevin Farros. I, I was there, but I'm not there anymore. My videos still are, and that's fine. Uh, yeah, I made you a moderator already. 
pretty sure. Attenberg. No, that was a good time. I mean, five years over there. That they were they were like five months old when I started over there. And before this channel, we had this channel before that for like a, nine months. Lee Davidson's got ninety five videos. Congra that's a lot, man. Congratulations. Um, peace, peace, peace. RC related, RC related links. Yes. Who wants one? God, I don't want to sit here and give out wrenches. I don't care if you guys have them, but I don't want to sit here and just give out wrenches. Um, I probably won't be at Oshkosh this year, man. It's I it, Things have to be sponsored for me to be able to do them. So until that happens, uh, probably not happening. Um, I'm really fortunate to get away in June for a couple weekends. I, I'd probably need to figure out doing some stuff in the winter. It's a little easier to get away in the winter. Um, I really honestly want to figure out uh, getting myself to Slovenia, to be honest with you. Yeah, Brooklyn, I, I'm not there anymore, but I was for five years. I mean, the, the face of the place. But they're, they're, uh, James is killing it over there now. Fair winds and following seas. You know, good. It's 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 fine. That's why I mean, if I'm not sitting over here doing this show as a representative, um, schlepping my own, you know, social media around. This is what we have now. The videos that are still up and rolling over there are videos we made years ago, months ago. So they're just still doing their job and. Um, We've been back over on this channel since like last, it's not even been a year really since I've been back on this channel, but we let this channel sit for uh, five years while we ran everything over there. So that's why you see guys jumping in on Patreon, going to my Teespring store and buying shirts and uh, doing what they can. You know, we have an Amazon store that you guys really blow up really well. Um, there's been a lot of purchases through Amazon. What's cool about that is it doesn't have to be RC related and it still like helps this channel out. Um, these apps that I run to help me take full advantage of all the feature benefits of these platforms are not um, free. Um, yeah, I want to go. You know what? I could definitely do a show with those guys, but I want to go there. I'm telling you. Um, thanks, Randy, for that. Dropping the links, man. Yeah, I want to go there. How cool would it be to go to Slovenia, dudes? Let them take care of me. I want to um, hang out there and eat some of that stuff. Okay, for real? Night all. Boozer, Boozer, you're like 22, and you're like always hitting the sack like you're 90. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making you look bad, dude. <laughs> yeah man it's it's I, I feel fine about how things are going um what crazy is oh yeah Dave no yeah totally cool it, you know it's nice uh having a group of people to do thanks Michael Roshka. <laughs> Slovenia fun. Yeah, that's cool, man. You fly at Cobb County. Do I almost I was that close to moving there. I was looking at real estate. I mean, I almost was there. But it just didn't work out and that's totally okay. Um I'm a, I'm a believer and there's a plan. It, it, it's not always our plan or the thing we want. But there's always a plan, and everything is as it should be. Um, I really wanted to do that, but it, it just it just it just wasn't quite right. So that's the wonderful thing about faith is you don't have to worry about those things or have a whole lot of regret. Um, this we'll leave it there. Papa's still up. Boom, Slovenia fun. Thanks, Dennis. 
Yeah, guys, did you... Hey, let's not forget. Remember this? Bam. Check out the Corsair shirt. I got my logo really small down on the bottom. Um, the Was it Wendell? Who helped me, Dennis, design that shirt? One of the Farley boys helped me on this one. And if you guys don't buy this shirt, I can't afford to pay him. <laughs> I'm paying for that design work because it takes time to do these things, guys. Um, yeah, Boozer. I mean, it's Saturday night. What are you doing? I mean, I'll stay up all night long and still be up for Easter with the kiddos. Um, Dave Marshall says it's a crazy field. Lots of trees, but the challenge and runway are awesome. Yeah, man. I Honestly, I, I, I had a great run for five years. I, I miss it a little bit, but it, it, again, it's totally cool. And I really, I, I did get to work with James for a while, and I love the guy like a brother, man. I really do. Um, RC Weaven, I see you, Robert and Blosh. Yeah, yeah, they'll be up soon. So if I leave that shirt on the website, on, on the video long enough, will one of you guys go? I'm just kidding. So let's look at, bam. Captain Mike and Pilot Ryan. Bam. This is the Corsair that is rocking now at under $189 if you take advantage of the coupon code. Bam. Here it is at HobbyZone.com. Bam. Here's the Mustang. All this stuff is available for pre-order, and you better get in on it if you want it because they're going fast, and they're coming soon. It looks like everything's on the water already and going to arrive, um, I think, first or second week of May, um, according to my correspondence with those at the top at HobbyZone RC. I'm sorry, HobbyZone.com. Bam, there's the Mustang. And bam, there's yours truly, Pilot Ryan in the house. Bam, boom, shaka, laka. Thank you, Victor Shamulus. Um, Randy, thank you for dropping links. You awaken the sleeping dragon fine all night. Let's make this a three-hour show. A three-hour show. The weather started getting rough. The tiny mm. ship was tossed. If it wasn't for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. <laughs> the minnow would be lost. Whatever happened with your tail hook? I'm working on it, man. Lee Davidson, it's in the queue. You know what? If I didn't spend five hours pissing with software today, I was going to work on that. Um, Aventador, yeah, you know what? I'm waiting on the hats to show up. I designed them. I sent them off. I'm waiting for that stuff. I need to contact them and, be, and ask them what's going on. Yeah, Ryan, time to share the knowledge on the pick link there with Mrs. Boozer. Um, I wish I understood that comment. I'm sorry. Hashtag redemption. Hanger rats hanging out. Wayne630 says it's only 7 p.m. Nick at night. <laughs> Dave's RC says Ryan is not for sale. Yeah, you know what's awesome I, I is is getting to do just everything. I am always going to want to bring the free wing and flight line stuff to video and let you guys get, you know, get my thoughts on it and all. It's wonderful stuff. Um, I'm really liking this Arrows RC stuff as well. And, and, of course, Horizon Hobby's always doing what they do, you know. And FMS, loving that. Uh, got a great relationship with them. Um, it, it's cool, man. I really have good relationships with everybody at the at the moment. I feel like some healing <laughs> be nice, but pretty good. Yeah, don't have time to fly what you have. Tell me about it, Brosif. Mrs. Boozer. Oh, yeah, you're gonna have to get with me on how you put those pics up on the screen. This has been months coming, actually. I, I'll be glad to help you. Um, but it's it wasn't easy. It was not easy. And, and so much other... Th I, really, 
I don't know how many afternoons I've sat down here trying to do this and got nowhere. Um, I finally was getting close last night, and then today thought I'd do a test run, and it's it, it, it's crazy. It's hard to do. No, not yet, Mary Boozer. I'm wearing it right now, but it's it's I have to get it to the cleaner still. Um, yeah, FMS makes some really good motors and EDF systems, Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> Roy says he's for sale. Um, yeah, thanks for hitting the like button, dudes. That's awesome. 85 still in here rocking it. I look forward to the show so hard, even though I don't half the time know what I'm going to do. You know, we're going to do this show next week live from Minnesota. And uh, I'm going to probably, I, it might just be an hour show because I'm not sure how long they're going to want to hang and get me. I got to get back to the hotel and stuff like that. But we'll see what's up. I'm, I'm going to try to go live from the airport. I got two layovers um, where I'm going to edit and try to get some things done. Guys, I hope if you've subscribed that you uh, hit that notification bell because some weeks I'm able to upload a lot. Thanks, David Attenberg. Um, some weeks I'm able to get a lot of videos up and sometimes not. Um, but I, I want you to see them when I get them up. You know what I mean? Um, Boozer, what time's your show tomorrow? 8 Eastern time? Dave... Marshall organic is absolutely like the secret word. That's that's true, man. Michael Rajka is not for sale, but he rents real cheap. <laughs> Mitchell Farley, thanks for dropping that Patreon link um, for Lease Navidad. <laughs> um, says Deuces, that's hilarious. Um, Aventador says he'll watch any time. Thank you, Mrs. Boozer. Yes, what's up? Mrs. Boozer's working on a design for me, too. Uh, but it's okay that it's not out yet because I need to... Funds come in like once a month, so I'm waiting on that so I can pay people. Um, Jeff's Custom RC. Check him out. Subscribe. RC Weaving. Subscribe. Anybody's got a channel, man. This We're, we're looking at two hours. About, about close. So, uh... You know, don't if you're on mobile and you click a link, you'll you'll go away. But guys, I'm talking so much, I haven't been able to drink my coffee. I got half of it left. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Now singing the Gilligan Island song. <laughs> you know, I I holy crap, Fred. Ugh, you're the best. Thank you so much, man. Um, my kid is going to be, I'm going to teach him the words to, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. I think I still know. What's up, Nicola, Nicholas Glorioso in the house? Did you get your maiden flight up, or not up, but did you maiden fly your F-22 yet, Brosif? Fred Barron, thank you so much. Man, Fred, do you have a blue wrench? I think you do, don't you? I'll give you two or three of them. <laughs> Do you have a you have a channel, Fred? Man, if Fred Barron has a channel, go subscribe twice to that son of a gun, would you? Holy smokes, this is great. Um, that's what's up. Does he, did I does he have a wrench or not? I want to make sure he does. I will give him out. Yeah, you guys, that oh, it helps tremendously. Not everybody's, you know, not everybody sends these, you know. If I do a lot of these planes, we have to buy them. Well, I'm not going to sing it, though. <laughs> Check out Jeff's Custom RC next up-and-coming YouTuber. Yeah, that stuff's cool. Um, you can, t I know what it takes um, to do time. The, the time he spent, thank you, Mary Boozer. He says, make it rain. Uh, I know the time it takes to do edits and, and that kind of stuff, and he really takes his time, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> Dave Marshall, now the truth comes out. Wrenches for the low, low price of a $50 channel contribution. Um, Fred does have a channel. Man, 
Oh yeah, he's got a blue ring. Somebody drop his channel, man. Uh, link. Yeah, wrench is fifty bucks all day long. Son of a gun. That's awesome. Um, Paul said he subscribed to Fred. That's cool. Brian Chambers retracted a message. What'd you say, man? Um, Brosephine. Hey, Ryan, says Glorioso. What's up? I got an airplane version of that song, says Brian Chambers. Of the um, Beverly Hillbillies, man? What, Jeff? Golly, guys, thank you so much. This is amazing. Um, you know, if I was like a teenager right now, I would be getting like too big for my britches. And I would like quit my real job at Burger King. I guarantee it. If I if this was happening to me and I was like a me a kid, I w I would have quit my my full time at this point already. Even though it's it's awesome, but it's it's definitely not gonna feed. Uh, let's see how many mouths, <laughs> a bunch of five of us and a dog. Uh, you guys are the best. Um, so listen, you know I was really so wrapped up in software this week, and I was on the truck all week long. I didn't have a lot of time to dive into social like I, I want to. Did is there any like news topics or is there anything that sticks out in any of you guys' mind that um, you want to mention here? Twenty four ninety nine blue screwdriver. Uh, my name should give a hint. Evan Tador. 2004. Yeah, Dave. E even probably even with uh, YouTube's 30 percent. Yeah, keep that day job. The day job's awesome, uh, for sure, man. Dave Marshall, don't you worry about it, man. Just come up. Hey, don't worry. That's don't worry about it. Come over here, hang out, contribute to the community, subscribe, all that stuff. Subscribe to all your buddies here. Because um, that's what it is. Left-handed screwdriver. Because um, that's free. Subscribing is free, man. No big deal. Um, Olsen Aviation says, Dad's awesome. That's cool, man. You, it, I think it is awesome that you and your dad... I think it's always cool, fathers and sons and daughters uh, in this hobby. Papa want a wrench. He won't know how to use it. Papa Boozer, if I give you a wrench, you're going to know how to use it. Huh? Let's see. Ad moderator. We're giving them out. 50 bucks, Brosif. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys are the best. Um, Eric Quinn. Dave called whiskey. Hey, how many flights did you get on that baby? Do you have one or two of those Corsairs? You, you're the one course. I know one of them that you have anyway. Damn it. Brian Chambers. Thanks. Uh, you, one of them, who was it? Michael Lavero. Didn't Michael Lavero do the weathering for you on one of your Corsairs? You guys should check that out. On um, you guys actually should follow David Kolwischke everywhere, like on Facebook, uh, his YouTube channel, because he's really active and super positive. Just a nice guy to have around, um, and a true inspiration at this point. Dave, quit doing the math. <laughs> quit doing the math. I'm so glad because it, it's one of the things that helps keep me going because, man, alive. I, I do work hard. It reminds me of back in the days when I had bands and I spilled my heart and soul out on the stage, but people would jump the fence just so they didn't have to pay $3 to get in. And so it's, 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 it's nice seeing it. Uh, I have two of them. Nine flights on the birdcage today. I'm in love. Mike did the weathering video up tomorrow. Cool, man. Drop the link for real on the RC Pilots Lounge and everywhere else. Um, Facebook group. Because um, we'd like to see it. Dave Kowiski is down 138 pounds. You're missing a person, my friend. You got to be feeling so good. I, I can tell you are. Not that you were some nasty cuss of a person before, but I mean, you're just so light 
you know, positive. I, I love you. Damn it, Mitchell. Thanks, man. Um, you're, you're just a treasure, Kalishki. I can't wait to meet you in person. I, when, when we finally get to meet people in person, I swear it's a bond for life. You guys who m- maybe can kind of pick up on that a little bit, but like, um, I think like half of the Farley family, uh, w- was it just Dennis for sure, and then one of your boys, maybe two of your boys um, in Texas, you know, we're, we're bros forever now. Brownie 64, when is the Corsair repair build coming out? That's a long video to edit. I had, um, as soon as I can get it done, it's, uh, hey, David Christie, what's going on? Uh, Pet a Bunny, says Randy Milton. Uh, always good to stop by and hang out, talking RC every Saturday night. Appreciate you, David Christie, for coming by. Um, Dave Kowiski says he feels completely different these days. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm glad for you. That's just fantastic. Your family's got to be really behind you on that, man, for sure. Yeah, right, David Attenberg? No kidding. Dave Kowiski just got the FMS 1500mm P47 in the air today as well. Six flights on it. Video up tomorrow. Hey, what battery did you end up liking the most on your Corsair flights and that P47? Let us know, guys. Mitchell, only the coolest one, he says. Aventador says, almost my whole family has flown my planes. That's cool. Dave Kowiski's YouTube channel, right there. Jeff says he's going to eat a bunny. Hassan Pfeffer. Hassan Pfeffer. You know, I've only flown that Corsair twice. Um, I really liked it, though. Um, the first time didn't really count because <laughs> you guys know what happened. The Maiden Maiden was uh, a 6,000 Jetworks pack, which was awesome. And then I flew it again on a 5,000 Admiral, but the old school one. is big. It's the bigger brick, more like the 6,000. And it was great. Kowiski flew Admirals, Pulse, and Jetworks. They all did good. Um, you just left the lead weights in their stock. You didn't add the two extra ones they sent you or anything like that. Boozer's got the uh, FMS 1450mm Corsair video dropping on Wednesday. Guys, there's a Corsair for every guy out there. Whatever size you want, they are available. Kill the rabbit, Roy. Um, Ryan, now with the wrench, here's the pronunciation. Victor says, uh, hope you're all not bored of my videos. I hope so too with my own as well. Uh, uh, oh, man. Victor Shamulus, check out his ch- Check out everybody's channel. Here's the pronunciation. Dave's RC likes his pulse batteries. Says they're his favorite hands down. Correct. All stock battery all the way forward. Yep. Mitchell says he wants to get his pilot's license, but my wifey isn't too keen on it. Keep buying models, man. You won't be able to afford to get your license. <laughs> Victor says, check out and hope you like the onboard videos of the MiG-21. <laughs> Mary Boozer says, let this be the last Corsair release for a year or two. Care to talk about ground effects and getting through it when landing jets versus prop planes, says Raven Rock. That's a fun one. Uh, Aventador. That's what I said, right? Av- or a- Aventador? Isn't that what I say? Flying RC is much cheaper, kind of, says Dave Marshall. What's the best ESC out there, 40 amp with a U-Beck? Man, I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, I mean, the the Hobby Wing stuff is tried and true, right? Really good. Good to know. Do you still need a number if you fly on private land? Probably. Best size battery for the Viper. Talking about the E-Flight Viper, I think 4,000 and below. Although me and Mike did cram 4,500 and 5,000s in there. You have to 
it's too heavy for the plane and you have to carve up on the battery hatch a little bit which I kind of don't like heading down the rabbit hole alright see you later Jeff thank you so much for coming by guys check out Jeff's custom RC tap the bell all your friends that you've subbed to tonight tap the bell that way you'll get uh, notified when they post new content you guys um, who watch videos uh, let me tell you I'll speak for all of us we love it when you come watch our videos um, comment and let us know that you came by it's always really nice to see familiar faces and names um, we, we love that ZTW is good ESCs Ron Upton you're absolutely right talking about ground effect with my man from North Carolina uh, can you ask me something more specific uh, I love that topic of conversation but um, I don't know where to jump in on it at yeah hobby wing ESCs are sweet um, yep and, that, and that's really what's stock in uh, all the free wing and flight line stuff and I have a Dave got go put two planes in your cart at arrows to confirm thirty dollars off with promo arrows. Ryan doesn't believe me. What do you mean? I believe you. <laughs> Dave's RC has the new flight line F four U. Scared to fly it after I watched this really good pilot mess his up. I can't remember his name. He did fix it and do a redemption flight. Man, what's his name? Yeah, that guy. What an what an a hole. <laughs> forgot to pre-flight he was so pumped maybe it was the the minus 20 degree temperatures too a uh, little bit hey what's this mary boozer's 50 away from his 500 giveaway y'all that's that's fantastic you guys i you know everybody's got their own little milestone so i'm where are we at right now for this channel I don't know anyway um, we're getting there I think 5,000 is going to be fun Nurse Ryan Ryan I guess I got two planes for my birthday the Corsair and the Raptor what oh man that's so fun uh, the Raptor is amazing but it'll it will slow down on you so if you put the nose up to slow it down let, this is kind of the ground effect thing discussion a little bit, I guess. Um, watch that video. Uh, we did two videos on the F-22 so far. I, w I would love to make a hundred videos on that plane. Um, but for 4.5, oh, cool. Um, push through with the throttle. Set your angle of attack, and if it starts getting too slow, either put the nose down a little if you have to, but push through with the throttle. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Hold that angle. And you can bring in that F-22 really slow. Uh, that plane likes, I feel like, whatever you put in it battery-wise. Uh, man, I've been painting my FMS F-15 for your entire show. Watching on my Roku. Cali graphics on the way. K Falls 173 FW. Um, 4.4 nice yeah man 5,000 is supposed to be the magic number for Horizon Deuces Wild calling it a night blue skies calm winds and greased landings um, I was thinking about the emergency room video Ryan maybe you were the doctor yeah man Me, well I don't know who was me and Mike Good on the club president, in my opinion. If it's an AMA-sanctioned field, you have to play by the rules. Yep. You should make a shirt, How to Make a Grown Man Cry with the Corsair Upside Down and the Tail Missing. Um, Mike Kennedy, 4.4. Thank you. Wayne630 wants to know, Victor, where is your home field, my friend? Speaking of home field, where's my cell phone? One possible way to counter ground effect is to program some slight spoiler on to kill the increased lift when close to the ground. 
I love ground effect, and you know, it's as long as you don't hit ground effect three feet up, I think you're okay. You know what I mean? Holy smokes. My mom asked me an hour ago if I was doing the show tonight. Yeah. Pondimus Maximus. Whoa, Ryan and Mike have their own channel. Instant sub. Comment on the Viper video. Yeah, you know what? It's easy to feel. It, it, I think it's probably easy for a lot of folks not to know we have this channel because we are still you know, all over the internet. See you later, Huju. Um, let's see. Man, we are two-hour show. That's an hour away for Wayne 630. No problem, guys. Always showing support. Got to call it tonight. Thank you. Field of Dreams. Later, Deuce. Baja Boozer. Cool, man. All right. Look it. We fly electric only. And he's only a minute away from the field, I think. Yeah, have a good Easter, everybody who's leaving, Michael Roshka. If you're on your way out, thumbs it up. Uh, appreciate the two guys with the thumbs down so much. Thanks for coming over. <laughs> you remember Tipper Gore and, like, explicit lyrics and Howard Stern and stuff like that? Don't watch if you don't like it. Um, sure, my Viper, for example, I'll come in for a landing with takeoff flap. Sync rate is nice and slow. I come in level and flare at the last moment, right when I get to flare and pull back to flare. Plane will gain. Yep. You gotta. You have to set the attitude before then. Because what's happening is you have, it's all about airspeed and bleeding it off. You've got enough airspeed that the plane's not done flying. So to make the transition from flying to, you know, ground handling, you kind of got to hold that nose off a little bit and bleed it off all the way or it's not going to stick it, monkey pants. It's going to want to fly again. So that's, it's not necessarily a problem with ground effect. It's just an airspeed deal where you've got more airspeed than you need and so it's ballooning back up. So just... Keep doing what you're doing, but hold that nose off a little sooner and bleed off all that speed. Have you ever been asked for your autograph? Um, I have. It was from you. Thanks. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm blonde under here. Um, I have been asked for my autograph. Ryan, have you ever been asked for I don't get it. Um, what cutting in on Bloss's territory, Boozer? What are we talking about, y'all? Yeah, Lee, you're right. I got off. I really got off here. Finally got Dave's RC. Woohoo. I've always been a sub to you. I was talking about the new kid, Aventador. Something about Blosh. Hey, see you later, hijinks. Oh, yeah, man. Um, does that make sense a little bit? Talking about the uh, landing on the Viper? I don't get it, Roy. I don't get it. Um, sorry. So... If you there's a lot of jets and and mostly jets I feel like where you because they're so slippery you really have to make concerted efforts to um, bleed off all the speed. If you watch us fly the uh, seventy millimeter BAE Hawk on the Motion Channel and even the eighty millimeter FMS one on this channel and a lot of other jets too. You'll hear us talk about how we uh, have to bleed off all the speed because that's exactly what will happen. Um, and, and if you, you're doing it better than some, and, and even times where I've uh, skipped it too, you know, too fast, didn't flare at all, 
you know, if you flare and you hit that balloon, well, at least you're slowing it down. But you have to add a little power or you're going to bounce it. But if um, I come in and don't flare or hold my attitude and push through with the throttle, I will have a junky landing. Um, Aventador's one stayed away. Cool, man. Yes, that's right. You did autograph the T-45. That's right. On the uh, battery hatch. Mrs. Boozer needs a wrench, doesn't she? Boom. 50 bucks. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, love it. Oh, I see. I see. They're talking about us doing the gas plane cutting in on Robert. Uh, just joking. Yeah, man. They don't own gas planes. You know what I mean? Do I have you as a sub? Dave's RC says. Mrs. Boozer, subscribe to Dave's RC already. Um, Pusha Studios, hit me up on Twitter. Cool, man. Uh, thanks. Yes, sir. There are time to. I'll come in nose up, and when I hit the ground effect, it like the plane stops sinking. So I chop the throttle, and most of the time it just plops down. That's really what's going to happen. In, unless you do feed in a little bit and increase the back pressure, you might be able to touch down a little better. But I've done that. I mean, it's really not awful when that happens. You're as long, Again, as long as it's not happening two feet up, you're good, which I hate. So is it just a matter of waiting out that two to four seconds of ground effects? Yeah, wait it out. Hold that position, bleed it, um, bleed it off all the way. If you're too high when that happens, give it a little bit of... Um, throttle keep just keep working it man just keep doing it keep doing it i'm not sure if, uh f900 ex we'll have to see you know what the just stay tuned on this channel and the hobby zone outlets for information you know uh subscribe to their uh newsletter and keep an eye on their website you never know what you're gonna see what can we do with the wrench uh drop links Without permission, basically. Somebody else is following me on Twitter now. Cool. Um, Mrs. Boozer is a hanger rat now. Yeah, hanger rat's in the house. Yeah, the Farleys have helped me on a lot of designs. Uh, the Corsair design, which is right here. I worked so hard on this today that I'm going to show you these pictures. And then I don't have a picture of the hanger rats one, but he uh, actually, Jasmine did that one too. No, you don't have to have a wrench for the to win the airplanes. <laughs> Be awesome, LOL. Now nah, you watch his channel for them. <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys. That's it. That's right. You're you're a moderator is what it means, the blue wrench and and you if there's some turkeys on the channel you can kick them out or you can tell them look at this beautiful Corsair right here and check it out at hobbyzone.com it's only 189 and there's a $20 off coupon if you buy more than one I think you save 30 this is unheard of Mustang same deal um, pre-orders available on these dudes right now and they're coming soon first week or two of May it looks like they're going to be here um, something about 50, 75 hanger rats still hanging out, man. We're two hours plus up in here. And then we are rolling back over to the camera. I'm so proud of this, guys. Actually, <laughs> it. a lot of times I will make notes. I'll surf around on the web and see uh, what I might want to talk about and things like that. Um. But I really, really, really wanted to finally get this figured out with the software where I could do these pictures and things. You know, I'm nine months in. Every Saturday creeps up on me so fast. But I, I want to really do a good job for you guys. You know, so that's what's up. You can watch videos on how to set it up and how to check if it is set up right 
what are we talking about? Turkey Channel. <laughs> kind of new to YouTube, Barry Gruder says. We're glad to have you. Free wing jets rates. What's your advice for new people that can't look at a control service and be like, oh, that's way too much travel? F-22, for example, I used to book low rates as my high. Oh, man, you know what the best thing to do really is is find somebody you trust on YouTube, right? And, and, and try to um, make that a point of reference. A lot of time, I really do think the books are right on. Um, after... Let's say you discover that maybe the high rate is too much, then you can, you know, of course, make adjustments. Um, but there, you know what? It's so funny. Like, there's some planes that I just will do what my default might be low rate land. I think low rates are the way to go because high rates look crazy. But then you fly the plane and it's like, oh my gosh, uh, I, I want to be in high rates. It just doesn't feel right if I'm not. So it really just depends on the plane. Stick it, monkey pants, says Benjamin Olson. Ryan is a wrench on the Boozer channel. Better than being a winch, I suppose. Um, thanks, Paul Hatcher. Where's your wrench, man? Come on. You're slacking, Paul Hatcher. Boom. There you go. Guys, I, I'm really proud that I've got this figured out to go back and forth between windows. I really always was too scared to do anything. I might be able to even drop my own links one of these days. <laughs> um, Overtime Pilots, this is heaven for me. Thank you, Eric Quinn. Guys, have a good night and a great day tomorrow. See you next week. Steve Coggins, thank you so much for coming by and sticking it out. I really don't always mean to go this long, but it's like, man, we're grooving. Dave's RC really likes high rates himself. Yeah, man, I think it depends on, you know, whatever each pilot wants, uh, honestly. Dave, uh, pretty much all free wing and flight line planes are flown on low rates with 30% expo for me. That's a great point of reference, Dave. Um, anytime I've been nervous on a plane, you know, character-wise, when I look at it, um, 30% is my default when I'm nervous. 20% is my not worried about it default. Lon, you've been lurking all night, you little turkey. <laughs> Gotta go. Good night, you hanger rats. Lon Louver, uh, we'll see you later. Thanks for coming over, man. Always a pleasure. Um, hope I see you in Muncie this year. Or Jet Jam, or both. Um, awesome. Cool. See you later, Lon. Yeah, Aventador's out of here. Yeah, it's 11-11. I'm saying 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10, 9, 8. Yeah, I honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to know how to even end the stream. It's like it's going on in two places. That's the weird thing about the software, and that's what took me so much um, trial and error today. Weather is going to be great here in Virginia tomorrow. Time to go our seeing, says Keith. USNVA11. Um, Virginia is for lovers. I used to have a T-shirt that said that. It was kind of, kind of cool. Uh, see you later, Wayne. Six thirty. Mikester from Australia. New Avanti S here and loving it. EDFs are reassessing a resurgence. Love the channel. Learn a lot and help my maiden. That's fantastic, man. Keep coming around here. Uh, appreciate you, Dave's RC. And yeah, on my high rates, I use 40 to 60% expo. Seems to be a comfortable area for me. That's cool. Wings 88, Ron Upton. I use high rate elevator and somewhere in between on aileron and rudder. Yeah, man. Um, high rate, you know, it's funny, right? On, on jets, it's a little different for me. It really just depends on if it feels mushy or not. Um, and also what I want out of the nose and the landing and all that stuff. The um, warbirds, however... High rate for me is really always about the tail, never the ailerons. I'm always happy with whatever ailerons give me. I mean, it'd have to be really crazy for it to be too much. The reason I go high rate on warbirds or civilian planes is crosswind stuff and ground handling more than anything. I mean, every now and then I'll flip to high rates because... Let's say the low rate doesn't have enough throw in it to do the maneuver I'm trying to do, perhaps. Um, Raven Rock 
Thank you uh, for thanking everyone. That's cool, man. Ryan says, thanks for the F-22 advice. Yeah, man, check out those videos. Uh, uh, there's a lot of my buddies who will watch these videos and listen uh, to the best of their ability to the throttle and what's going on. And if you watch me shooting a bunch of landings or touch and goes, you're going to hear on one landing um, maybe no throttle. And on another landing, you're going to hear like blipping it, right? Like off and on, blipping the throttle. And then on some landings, the perfect ones, you'll hear like a steady. I had it set just right. I was able to keep it just perfect. And and the the sound will be constant. So the answer to the question no one's asked yet, but happens all the time. Um, see you later, Craft King. People always want to ask, what's your elevator or uh, what's your throttle setting for landing on that plane or whatever? Well, the throttle setting is not absolute. It's whatever you need at the time. In a perfect world, like I'm saying, like I'm able to set it and not forget it, but just maintain. That's when everything is clicking just perfect. But a lot of times you have you're the one that has to discern what that plane needs speed wise. So if you're coming in hot or from too high or maybe it's nose heavy and it's sinking quick, you, you don't need much throttle till you get to the very end. Then you need to pull the nose up slow, um, which is going to lose your airspeed, but you don't want to do it too quick because you'll rise. So you got to feed in a little throttle, try to just maintain that sink. Um, if you're coming in pretty good and you're blipping the throttle to keep from stalling, that's another thing that happens. Um, or if you just get lucky and just get a set at all and just be constant the whole time, that's nice too. So it's whatever the plane needs at the time. Uh, let's see. Practice, practice, practice. That's right, man. Do it over and over. Paul Hatcher says... Can't remember the guy's name now. I delivered the AMA truck and trailer to some guys in Fredericksburg last year or year before that. Every landing is different. Yeah, man, for sure. Favorite transmitter. Mitchell Farley wants to know, Ryan, what's your favorite transmitter? Looking for a new one after I found out that my DX6i has a bad gimbal and was the reason I totaled my FMS gunfighter. Man, I like the DX8. Um, because you can take advantage of anything Horizon, Bind and Fly Basic. You also have an extra channel or two if you want to fly plug and play, you know, free wing flight line stuff. And if you wanted to have a, a auxiliary gyro like a Hobby Eagle in there, you can. You've got that extra channel. Um, it's a great radio, easy to use, just like a DX6, but a couple more channels. Um, Mary Boozer likes the iX12, but I hear you talking about we updates and stuff too much. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, I like the DX8, Farley. I really do. And you know where to get it. <laughs> um, I mean, DX9 is cool too, but I, honestly, I'm really – there's only been a couple times that I've needed more than an 8. Um, you know, if, if the DX9 is just a little bit more than an 8, then maybe I'd go for it, but, um, I missed something. I missed something I'm sure was funny. Yeah, Roy, I think he says, uh, Reckham Roy says, I think that's the transmitter I'm going to get is the DX8. Yeah, man, it's on my store and it comes from Horizon. Dave Marshall says the 12 is a bit rich for him. It's more than I want. I, you, life is hard enough. I want my hobbies to be easy for me, you know, pretty much. <laughs> Make sure you take a chainsaw to cut the tree down and get your plane back. Yikes. Thanks, Mitchell. Yeah, man. Tried and true DX8 for real, Barry Gruder. Yep. Dave's RC loves his uh, FR Sky. Um, Eric Rogers has, I think, a Tyrannus or an FR Sky too, and he really likes it. Um, that's cool, man. I'm my favorite radios are Spectrum and Futaba, though. That's what I've been flying for a long time at this point. 
Enrique Kramer, not seeing you over here, but welcome, man. Uh, we are still at it after a couple hours talking about planes, man. Um, when landing a warbird, not only is the throttle setting important, but also not pulling the elevator at the moment of touchdown and onwards. It all depends, man. It all depends. It all depends. You know, uh, it really depends on the plane. I, I think at a point, once you've bled off enough speed where you know for a fact you're not going to fly anymore, stick in that tail, pin that elevator is the best way to get your ground authority back on rudder and elevator. A lot of times, if you don't fly in crosswinds and stuff, it doesn't matter, I suppose. But, um, boy, it does for us because we fly when we get a chance, and a lot of times it's it's nasty. Mitchell Farley says he's going to run his house on an IX-12. Um, I got one of our hangar rats messaging me now. Sean Gallagher is still flying with his 10-year-old Futaba 8FG. I got a, a, a SJ or something like that. 8J, that's what it is. Mike Kennedy says the IX-12 might be difficult for iPhone folks because it's droid-based. Could be. I think Mary Boozer has like every spectrum radio there is. Patrick Rohrbach, I hope I said that correctly, saw you fly at HSD Viper. So cool. Are you going to maybe get a turbine someday? Maybe someday. I'm so happy in electric town, and I've, I've built up quite a community of folks, I feel like, in electricville that, I might do turbine someday, but I'm more inclined. I tell you what I like about HSD is that the same airplanes, for the most part, that you like turbines are also available electric. And that's really where I'm at. So I'm going to stick with electrics for, for now. Nothing against them. It was fantastic. It was awesome. But, I mean, honestly, I'm the kind of guy that really doesn't even want to have to take my wings off to get the thing to the field. Time is too hard to come by. Like, I just want to bring stuff, and and that I have enough batteries, I get a fly. So I'm not worried about flight time. Mary Boozer says he's got to quit giving away his secrets. Oh, cool. Steve Coggins sent me a picture of the new runway at, man, i got to get to Triple Tree. It looks good. Yeah, you guys that go to uh, Joe Nall are going to be that fly jets are going to be really glad to have this new runway there. Man, I gotta go sometime. I gotta go sometime. Mitchell Farley's learning how to write Android apps right now, but all his devices are Apple. You're a smart cat, aren't you, man? Who we? Um, Keith is still using a Generation 1 DX8 for his planes and a DX7 Gen 1 for his helis. Never had any issues. Yep. Paul, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's all priorities. You know what I'm saying? The the turbines, I mean, if you think if you add up all the foamies you have, um, you could probably have a couple turbine jets. You know what I'm saying? It that's the lovely part of this hobby. Right, like we all, I, if you tell talk to people who don't fly, they kind of lump it all together. But the fact of the matter is, there are so many different disciplines to the hobby. I mean, if I wanted to fly timer gliders made out of silk, um, I could do it. If I wanted to fly control line, I could do it. And there's a whole community around each facet of the hobby. I I don't know what to call our piece. But when I'm talking to people that don't, that aren't in the hobby, I tell them what we do is recreational and historical kind of nostalgia. Usually, all of us, even though we fly sport planes and stuff, I feel like a lot of us might have got our start with um, the warbirds of it all, right? Um, cool jets, fighter airplanes, things like that. Not because we're warmongers, but just because we know guys that did it. Dads, uncles, nephews, aunts. You know, every, you know what I mean? 
So I, I call it like the uh, kind of the recreational side, nostalgia. There's not a lot of competitions that we do every now and then, like Boozer, you know, and, and Sean um, are doing some scale flying competitions and maybe some speed runs and things like that. But it's not like the the competitions with 3D and things like that. So somebody figure out a better way to just, to tell lay people what we do, um, let me know. Um, yeah, tactic is interesting. One time, me and Mike were flying on tactic. It was the CTLS. <laughs> this was early days. And, uh, <laughs> something about the timer was going already, and we were doing our second flight or something. And, uh, I wanted to reset the timer. I didn't know how to do it. Mike set up the radio, whatever, but he didn't do fail safe or something. So I turned off the radio. And you know how on tactic you have to like reverse the throttle channel or something? I think Futaba you have to too. Um, well, that CTLS took off like a bat out of hell, man. Because when I turned off that radio, it just went full throttle Johnny down the parking lot and hit the curb to the sidewalk which gave it a little bit of up and uh, sheared off all the landing gear and uh, it's probably actually on film too actually wait I don't know if I could ever find it I have so much stuff it's not even funny but then it so yeah full speed ground uh, roll to the curb Sheared off the landing gear, gave it enough up to fly full speed into the tree that was right there. Um, that's my tactic experience. <laughs> um, I guess, we, yeah, let's see, what, what are we missing? I believe it's mostly pilot error. Mine does not bounce, but I respect it and fly it like it needs to be flown. It's not hard, but you need to learn the proper technique. Um, what plane are we talking about? Yeah, Dave, I mean, you, you, you got to get what's right for you. If you know you need all that stuff, yeah, 12 channels, man. Those receivers are, uh, you could get a plane for what those receivers cost. Yeah, you never want to shut off a tactic radio. That's, tr yep, that's right. Um, I learned that. Yep, sometimes you have to reverse the throttle. You never want to shut them off. That would be awesome to see. Hey, what plane are we talking about, Raven? Free Wing A-10? Is that what you're talking about? Hey, Kawishki, do you, what landing gear do you have on your um, A-10? Free Wing A-10? Tell me. Let's talk about that one, because I love talking about that one. Ugh. That's too bad, Paul. That stinks. Um, John Rogers is talking about the FMS Futura power system, Hobby Wing 100 MPSC, um, upgraded 21. Yeah, I've been seeing that. Uh, I saw that release on on social. Um, Dave Kowishi talking to Raven Rock about Facebook uh, detail my technique. Yeah, I want to talk about that too. Um, free wing A10. Yes, I know that. Um, what landing gear do you have on your free wing A10, Kowishi? I'm waiting for an answer because I'm not talking until I get one. Three hour show. Dude, I can go longer than that, boozer. I'm an animal, Brosif. Um I wanna know so bad what the hell landing gear Dave has on his A ten. Somebody go to look at his YouTube channel and tell me. Alright, cool. Oh, okay, Dave. He kept the stock trailing links on his A ten. He flies off grass mostly, and they work solid. Dave Kowiski, stock from the factory, no mods. You're a cowboy. 
Um, a, a, another one of those commit to the elevator, bleed your speed deal. Regardless of what landing gear you have on there, my theory on the landing gear is this, and it's my sec my recommendation. I think you should pick one or the other. You either go all trailing links, all three. As it comes, you have two mains that are trailing link and one more up and down nose gear. Um, so either go all three trailing links is my advice or all three up and down. Check out this channel. I did a video on Pilot Ryan Captain Mike YouTube channel, a crap ton of touch and goes and landings on the free wing A-10 with the uh, straight up and downs, you know, the more scale ones or whatever. Um, so I was able to leave the stock nose gear and then just swapped out the two mains and I had a lot better time with the airplane because of it. If I was flying off grass, I would want all three of the trailing links. So I always did better on that plane when I commit to the elevator and set my attitude and really work the throttle, but don't mess with that pitch much. And if you watch that, we did one on Motions Channel too. So there's there's two videos of just a ton of touch and goes with that plane. And even though I'm flying on the upgraded like scale landing gear, I think there's still a lot that can be learned from uh, listening to the throttle and watching and seeing what happens. Um, a lot of guys had trouble with that plane, and I I, I, I thought it was just them. Uh, for the longest time, but I saw some landings in slow motion that should have been okay that just ended up really oscillating um, the forces back and forth. And and what happens, let's talk about it physics a little bit here. I love this, actually. When you have the trailing links and you don't change the nose gear, when you touch down on the plane, if you don't touch down just right, uh, later, go to bed, man. See ya. <laughs> if you don't touch down just right, let's think about it like a fulcrum. All of a sudden, you add whatever that distance is that those gear go back on the trailing links. You add that immediately to the leverage quotient of the fulcrum and exacerbate the forces on the nose gear, which then is m maybe kind of stiff, so springs it back to the, the trailing links again, which stretches out and makes it that much more again on the nose, and so that you get that crazy oscillation. So I think when you have them all the same, and, and one proof in the pudding on this theory is also... Uh, George Baker was, I think, probably the first guy, or at least one of the f first notable fellas, who he turned his mains around, which basically made him just like the upgrades were, except there was no suspension at all. So he's got stiff legs, turned around, basically scale um, landing gear, and he was able to tame that bounce that way. Um, I almost did that to mine, but I was like, I want suspension still. So I finally got a chance to do it, and I, I did all the way around, up and downs, and had a ball. But again, so back to the physics part. When you have everything's trailing links, you're even though they, they're all three going to go back, and you don't extend the length of that fulcrum, which is going to exacerbate forces on either side of this, bronco action so it seems to be i'm not the only one who thinks so and it, it seems like guys would agree that um pick one you know i was able to you know we, we flew our a10s and muncie at nephi uh and we were able to um not bounce ours around and i was flying on stock landing gear but i'll tell you i was really worried about getting it perfect um I felt like you have to really just kiss it. 
Um, I did my whole thing was I was wanting to land so like a butterfly with sore feet, right? I wanted to land so light on the mains, the trailing link mains, that I didn't really see them compress much, because I was afraid that I'd get that hopping happen. Because it, it happened to me a couple times too, and it was you know sometimes when you thought they were going to be okay landings. And and I was flying that uh, the upgrade strut video in some not the b best wind ever, and uh, man, I was able to do okay. I thought. Yep. Yeah, grease landings is a good answer, but if you can't grease them all, you do yourself a favor by committing to all three being the same, whichever way it is. Victor Shamulus, Free Wing 8S F4, going up tomorrow. Uh, boozers, good night. Get out of here. Don't let the door hit you. Uh, love you. Keith is out of here up in seven hours so he can hit the RC field. Yeah, man, I'll be up in seven as well for Easter. Um, Kevin's talking about E-Flight F4. 90 people still here? You No, that's not right. Refresh. It's only 55. Uh, Barry Gruder, see you later. Fred Barron, everybody, thanks for coming by. Thanks for the support. It's amazing. Um, da -da 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 -da. Great show. Thank you for that, Barry. Um, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Yeah, I should stay on till the boozers go live. I think they only let you go eight hours and then they'll cut you off. Uh, you guys are the best. Yeah, man, my mom, she texted me. Yep, showtime. Uh, all right, guys, as always, you know where to find the links. They're in the home page and usually they're in the description of any video. Um, they're not in the description of this video yet uh, because they're not. Um, it will take a minute maybe for that to happen. So you can always, if you want to get anywhere, uh, go treat the page like a website. Go to the home channel, uh, the home page of the YouTube channel. And up there in their banner art are links to go other places. Uh, there's links all up in this chat. Um, if you don't see the live chat right away, it's just because the YouTube has to process the whole thing the live chat will be available to peruse through um either later or the next day it kind of goes away um while it's processing dave says about that time hey ryan as long as you're here we'll be here you know that bro thanks dave you're the best man would need a membership sometimes you can fly at clubs as a guest if you're thinking about um you know, joining. Um, Benjamin Olson said goodnight, I think. Yeah, I need to paint that F-18. I need to put the stickers on it. Uh, 54321, yes, yes, I'm getting there. Two minutes. I said two minutes. All right. Two minutes equals 20 minutes in Ryan time, or dog years. I saw live chat before I saw you, Ryan. Yeah, you did, which is kind of cool, especially when it works. In a perfect world, I have these streams built out way ahead of time, and I can promote them and share the link and distribute that on social, but I wasn't always able to do that um, just because I'm a techno-peasant, mostly. Guys, appreciate it. It's almost a three-hour show. Good times. I want to thank Hobby Zone for seeing the value in this community and bringing the goods to let us see it here first. I mean, how cool is that? Here's a Mustang. Get it while they're hot. They're coming in soon. Um, Pre-order, super special, save another 20 bucks, whatever. I mean, the deal is amazing on these guys. Um, everything's going to be coming back in stock pretty soon. Uh, looks like, again, first or second week of May, the next month here. Um, Corsair looks good. Of course, we're going to get this baby out and fly it at the Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike YouTube channel. 
and uh, the Farleys have done a good job on the Hangar Rat stuff. And there's our newest design of the Corsair right there. Um, totally cool. Check out Dave Kowiski's A10 Maiden Flight. I hope you guys like seeing uh, the visuals. I'm so proud of that. You have no idea how long I've been wanting to do that. And uh, I finally got it figured out, and I'm so pumped. Patrick Rohrbaugh. Paul Hatcher, Ron, Later Gator, Wings88, Mitchell Farley says, Good night, Hangar Rats. Thanks for all you have done to help me out. Chris Jackson, don't forget the Barn Burner Shootout at Pegasus Club, Hagerstown, Maryland, June 21st. See, man, that's a bad weekend, man, because that's like Nephi or Jet Jam. Uh, almost a record time, yeah, man. Uh, Dave Marshall, bam. Reckham Roy's good stuff, Ryan. Have a happy Easter. I sure will. I love my kids. Uh, Dave Marshall, bam, they got me a bunch of chocolate out of Easter egg hunt today. I'm going to go find it, though. I don't know where it's at. Um, I think we were close to 110. Love that shirt, says Brian Chambers. Thank you. Yeah, you got one. You won a shirt. Uh, good night, Dennis, says Paul Hatcher. You guys are the best. So what are we going to do? How do we do this? I always forget. The five is nothing, right? Uh, Dave's RC, congratulations on Hobby Zone working with the Hangar Rats and Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike and the RC community. Later, guys. Good night to you all. Yeah, guys, man. Wish me uh, Godspeed on the flight to Minnesota next week. Um, stay tuned. Hopefully, everything works out as long as I got a good, solid connection. Um, you know me. I work hard to work it out. If if I ever miss 9 o'clock, uh, there's a good reason because. It's it, it, I'm, I'm going for either a live or a premiere every Saturday till the rapture. All right. <laughs> um, 14 days in a row. Get it done, son. Dennis Farley, salt of the earth. Keep holding it down. Can't wait to see you guys. Have a great night. And Easter Pilots, Fred Barron. All you guys who contribute, man, thanks. All you guys who come by and participate, thanks. Um, you guys, this is your channel. This is your show. I appreciate it. We're out of here in five. Hanger rats forever. Three you next time. Three you later. Y'all are too good. Two people forgotten. Stick a monkey pants. Mm. See you later. Good show. Hobby Zone. Thank you so much. Uh, the stuff looks great. Stick around here to see me fly this stuff. Um, you know what's fun? The, the little planes, it's, it's almost like a, a relief. There's not as much to worry about. They fly nice and light on the wing, and you can just rip the snot out of them. These are going to be a blast. If you want to get a taste of that, watch the Bearcat and the Trojan videos because the Corsair and the Mustang are going to be more of the same. You guys, I'm going to end this, baby. We'll see you. Bob the Good, what's up? Stick monkey pants. See you later, guys. See you on social this week. Uh, again, this show on the road live in Minnesota next week for the giveaway this Corsair and the Mustang and some other goodies from the fine folks at HobbyZone.com. Check them out. Get on the mailer. We'll see you. Blow up the show next week, rats. Appreciate you guys. See ya.